Yak, 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 yak. Too much talk, boys. Just get to the point. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> we offer no apologies for the length of this video. Nope. Please come along for the ride. <laughs> On today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're doing our one-year anniversary show, also known as the State of the Channel. And I'm going to ask the Beard, what's been happening on the channel? Can you tell everyone? They're dying to know. <laughs> I've been talking to you. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this thing on? in the comments, please explain to Pat why microphones don't work without a cable on them. Oh, I thought it was a wireless mic. <laughs> so yes, one year. This is one year. We've been doing it for a year. Um, and it might not sound like that big of an accomplishment, but there's a lot of work and time and effort, and it's just been fun. That was the goal. The goal was fun. The goal We're was still fun. having fun. So this is not the wrap-up of the right. first year and the, yeah. we're out. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, it was nice knowing you all. See ya. No, this has been great. And uh, I think that takes us right into the first point. Thank you to everybody that's been watching the channel. Yep. Everybody that's taken the time to, you know, the time, the considerable amount of time it takes to click like, subscribe. Um, but, you know, that means so much. It really does. And um, we appreciate it to no end. And... Um, We've never really talked about a release schedule. I know that's one of the things they say you should do. We have been pretty consistent. So if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video you're watching, um, I'm not sure how that happened. And you subscribe after this video, you're our people. Yeah. So every Wednesday at noon, every Saturday at noon, we typically put out a video. Uh, sometimes there's extra ones through the week. Sometimes there's live streams. But typically noon on Wednesday and Saturday are good times to look for videos from us. Uh, or close to that time. So with the state of the, the channel, we thought we would share some statistics that we don't typically share, right? Right. So, um, and not that we, t I mean, we look at them, but I'm not sure we pour over the analytics and stuff. So we dove into that a little bit. So right now, as of today, 651 subscribers to the channel, which is really impressive when you consider in July, the end of July, we had 100. 100. We had 107 months. Right. And now, at 12 months, we're sitting at 651. Right. So it's really been growing kind of quickly lately. Uh, there's been 81,238 views on the channel. Um, and the watch time hours is about 5.8, almost 6,000 uh, watch time hours. So the two big things on YouTube channels, get to 1,000 subscribers, get to 4,000 hours of, of watch time. We have that. We're still working on subscribers. Uh that's done through posting about 120 videos. I think a little over 120 videos and about 22 live streams. So somewhere between 140 and 150 videos have been posted. Interestingly, the top video is the Will P and W video uh, with 8,364 views on it. Um, on the Tagima guitar or Tajima guitar. Tagima. Tagima. Tajima. Uh, the Harley Benton, the quick look, unboxing quick look we did. So the Tegima was in May. The Harley Benton was probably about a month to month and a half ago. All right. Uh, that has 8,130, so probably within the next couple of days we'll catch up. It's coming for you, Tajima. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> uh, and then the Ask the Expert with Cristel Porter on the Firefly guitar has almost 5,000 views on that. So those are the top three videos of view-wise on the channel. Uh, not necessarily in that order in time watched. Uh, the top nine videos on the channel all have to do with the cheap guitars we bought. We'll talk more about that later. Yep. Uh, the number 10th video is the first pedal. That's the Microvent Mini. Uh, the Microvent 122. Um, we'll talk more about that later. And then after that, we see more pedals like the Black vs. Red Gen Zen Drive would come in number two. The battery power for the Joyo, um, the Joyo battery pack. For your pedal board which is awesome uh, had a lot of views the microvent 16 the valve reamer and the joker octave which was like the second unboxing video we ever did and um whew. <laughs> part of this process we went back and watched stuff and someone was like that's funny and some of that's like oh that is just not, why why do we have 651 subscribers <laughs> yeah so uh let's see then most popular playlist is that Leslie sound mm -hmm. with kind of right around the same place that the video, the playlist we put together, that's a whole bunch of songs that feature that Leslie sound. All right. So those two are the most popular unboxing and quick look comes after that love pedals and field trips after that. 
So, you know, just a look at some of the statistics, which I'm not sure if we're doing this for you or if we're doing it for us because we have talked about how it will be cool in a year from now to go back, look at this video, right. and plan the next one. Right. Um, and some of this is like kind of just kind of like a history thing mm-hmm. for us, I think. So, um, I think you had something. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, as I do exactly what I say we never do. So one thing, again, with the channel, like, what is the first year going to look like? And one thing is we never really thought we're going to have swag. But we have T-shirts and we have <clears throat> hoodies and I believe even, like, uh, some women's cut items on the link that, that the beard will put up. And he only wears those on Friday nights. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's weekend attire for me. And then sort of, like, unofficial swag. We have little plectrums and stickers. And then uh, my wife has been super supportive and we got these little magnet things made. So... Uh, these are things that, you know, if we sell a pedal on our reverb store, we send them out. Or we've uh, a few uh, friends of the show, we've sent them out. Um, <clears throat> so that was one thing we just, I just like, wow, we had swag. And thanks to your brother who kind of handles mm-hmm. that for us. A little nepotism there, a little little plug for his business uh, right. for, for that. And then, uh, a great job. But everyone's dying to know, Beard, Beard, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I warned him that I was going to bring this out again. <laughs> so... Yeah, well, yeah. then they did that, and then we designed this for the Leslie Sound Series, right. so we have that. And again, you know, and I am not a hoodie person, and especially maybe being an educator and telling kids to put their hoods on all the time, I've just grown to hate them. But I'm just telling you, it looks rather ominous with that hood up and the beard poking out. It is a little scary. Mom for Christmas picked yeah. up one. So she bought from my brother right, a shirt right. to give me for Christmas. It's a win-win. So mom is winning all around. Uh, so Leslie Sound sweatshirts, too. But that takes us, I think, into... The first topic for the night, which is that Leslie sound. Yeah, which, you know, I got to give uh, props to the to the beard for having the idea of, like, let's do a series on Leslie pedals because there's an infinite number of these pedals. And it's not something that if you go scour the YouTube world, there's not really anything like it. And um, so with that, started a, started an idea of let's go find out what pedals are out there. What are the big popular ones? And so that led him to actually do, like, a little bit of an email to some companies and not necessarily this was the first pedal to come right and so again things that i didn't think would happen the first year we get a pedal sent to us by fender like the first pedal like kind of like are you kidding me like it's fender and i i said in the one episode you know it's fender so they can but it's fender they don't have to i mean you know they're sending these out to the big youtubers and things so so kind of a big moment for us for this to come but i think one of the rival big moments is that is is what you have over there that came about as part of this series right because the first person we reached out to and it was kind of like one of those moments like there's pedals that we want to do but leslie pedals tend to be expensive and since we're funding everything um <laughs> buy the how, swag <laughs> how do we yeah buy a t-shirt how do we how do we do that and so one of the companies i i had to have was this the mini vent too i was like we have to have this pedal it's you see it a lot on major players' boards and stuff like that. So I actually reached out to him. It's Guido at uh, Neo Instruments. And he said, yeah, I, I really like the idea of the Leslie series. That's really cool. I'd be happy to send you one. But do you want that or do you want these? And these didn't exist at the time. Right. Um, in fact, he had just kind of got done... We, we waited on the show mm-hmm. until these showed up, right? So he sent us these. We were the first ones to have it. Uh, first ones to put videos out on them. Probably why this is so high right. on the list. Um, in fact, I emailed him at one point. I was like, dude, I used that live last night, and it was amazing. And he was like, well, when that pedal becomes a cult classic someday... You can say you were the first one to ever play it on stage. In because the world. apparently nobody else right. had ever played it on stage at that point. So how cool is that? Uh, so we love that. Um, but they weren't the only people to send us stuff. Um, Dave Sestito at uh, DSL yes. had reached out. Yeah. yeah. Oh you God. always you do have, that. You have DLSX again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's because of the... It, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> just forget it. DLS effect. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Sent out an email to Dave, and he was like, hey, you know, send me your channel again, because I touched base with him again. He said he would send it, and then I had to touch base. And he sent me the channel, looked at it, and he still sent it to us, which we were kind of amazed by. Right. And he sent him a link to our channel, and he still sent it. Right. <laughs> and he, um, you know, just a great guy. Yeah. One of the things he said to me is like, you know, I don't, I, th- this series is kind of different than what anybody's been doing, and so that kind of meant something to us. Uh, we were really kind of big fans of that thought, and kind of 
validated what we were doing. Right. And um, other people who joined in the party, um, not everybody said yes, but uh, Moore did, and I'm not going to unbox it here, but they sent us the, um, the, the Soul Shiver, which is one of their small format pedals that also has a, a chorus and a vibrato, I believe, on mm -hmm. that pedal. So we did an episode on that. Moore was kind enough to send that. And then um, <clears throat> New X sent us the Rocktory, which is really cool. Um, yeah. Because it has, in addition to the rotary speaker, it has two octave uh, adjustments that you can set, and it's it's pretty clever too. Because Rocktory and they have OCT as uh, stands out in their logo, so really cool of mm -hmm. New X to send this out to us. Um, and there was a couple others that that gave us some discounted pedals, but these are the ones that were all in and sent us stuff. Mm. You know, super appreciate. And it actually, that then led mm. to a whole new series. <laughs> right. So. In doing that Leslie Sound series, we had a question that took us to an expert. And uh, I mean, if you're going to go to an expert, go big, right? So that put us in touch with Josh Scott, who's in the process of, of maybe doing something else for us, which that's something for you to look forward to, um, hopefully. And then he agreed to do an interview. Mm -hmm. So that started kind of the interview series. So we did an interview with... This is on the logo of the interview series. Right. I just wanted to hold it again. <laughs> um, that led to the interview with Josh Scott, yeah. which was awesome. He talked about new pedals before they were even released. Um, of course, we did. We had to wait a day to release the video because of yeah. that. Yeah. But, I he mean, told us cool. about the PG-14 yeah. the day before he released everything yeah. about it. Um, but that, again, another moment. Not to go on and on because it's great that Dave Sestino and other people agreed to do this. But when you have Josh Scott like just helping you out, it's, it's just... Right. I never would have thought that. And our friends are like, you interviewed Josh Scott? I'm like, yeah, he's a great guy. Well, and that takes us to, because Josh agreed to do it, we were like, well, maybe we should ask some more people. Right. So we went back to Dave, yep. who sent us a pedal and said, Dave, would you like to come on the show and do this interview? And he, he said yes. Actually, I think we recorded his first. His was first, yeah. Um, and he hung out with us, did the interview, and man, talk about a guy that's connected and selling pedals to some great players. Mm -hmm. So definitely go check out Dave's video. Yep. Um, we then did uh, Swindler Effects. We had a whole big thing going on with Swindler, <laughs> and you can learn about that in the interview that's coming out shortly after this video. Uh, that ended up with us having two of his pedals. We have his uh, Red Mountain Tremo and this Golf Chorus. Great stuff from Swindler. Long, long interview, but I think worth it, right? I yeah. think worth it. So Super down to earth guy, great guy. Yeah. And we got a third pedal coming from him. By the time we're done tonight, I'm going to order it. Uh, right going to dip our toe into the compression world. So definitely check out that. So there's probably, there's one other confirmed. Yeah. We had to wait for the person to get back from Nam. Yeah. And a couple other ones on the burner. So hoping maybe six in that. Yep. Six videos in that season. Mm -hmm. And so I think a, a really logical thing for us to talk about next would be like, not the guests that we've had on yeah. the interview series, but the guests that we've had in the basement. In the intersanctum. I joke right. that it's like the bat cave. We have to spray them with bat gas, and there's a gate that falls down, and they drive in and right. come down to what I affectionately call the beard cave. Um, so Although I hate the whole I'm, man cave he thing. Hates it. He, there's <laughs> lots of things that I do that bother him, but it's <laughs> part of our chemistry. <laughs> like this, for example. You want to tell him what bothers you about me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I touch this mic again, I think I'm going to get tased. <laughs> it's probably going to get touched again. But uh, so, you know, part of that, uh, you know, um, trying to be strategic about some things in the channel. The, and the Tajima did really well. And a good friend of mine, Dan Pratt, who I've known for several decades, I know that he bought one of the Tajima strats. So we invited Dan to come and he brought the guitar and did a little intro that you might see in one of the other videos we're going to do here. And so it was great for Dan to come over and experience mm -hmm. the show and get blown out by a couple amps. And then I had a friend from out of town with me that sat right over here to our left. We had our first studio audience member. My good friend, Dr. Rich Lambert, was here, and there was some applause. And one other time, my brother came over and laid on the floor with uh, Zelda, the dog, the unofficial mascot of the show. And But probably one of our favorite guests, our really good friend, Chris Delaporta, has come over here several times mm -hmm. um, to... Uh, to, to talk about guitars that we bought that we sent to him to set up and give his thoughts. So Yeah, he's been a regular he's becoming a regular yeah. Yeah. Hello. 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 So Chris, great guy, I've been friends for a long time and, and that sort of I think goes into the next thing that well, you missed one. Who, you oh, I, oh my gosh. Uh, my friend our friend Esty came in. So right. Esty came in on the Tajima video 
because the big question was, can it praise him? Can it PNW? And he is our PNW expert. Yeah, I forgot SD. So that video has all those hits. You forgot always, the guy that has the most hits on it. Well, anything. I always joke, <laughs> is it because SD was in the video or because of the guitar? Who knows? Yeah, yeah who knows? So let's go back to the segue that we tried to plan and go back to Chris. And now uh, you can... Kind of right. So Chris, first video with him was at his shop yeah. as part of the field trip thing. Mm-hmm. So... There's so many field trips. We've got to hang out with a bunch of good friends. Uh, we've got to meet a bunch of people. Uh, there's no way to, I think, kind of dive in and dissect that. So what we've done is just... It's like put, an award show. You don't want to mention one because you might forget and we're in right. front of a camera and he's got microphones on his face, you know. So the best way that the editor did this was to... We'll just throw a montage together of some of the field trips that we've done. So you maybe, if you haven't caught all of them, we'll see something that would yeah. inspire you to go out and check them out. Because there's been some really great uh, field trips out there. So we'll let you watch that quick. We're out and about, and today we're at Noteworthy Guitars in Mechanicsburg, and we have the owner, Ed Nesbitt, with us, and he's going to tell us a little bit about why he got into this crazy world of buying, selling, and fixing guitars. So. All right, in today's episode, we are hanging out in beautiful downtown historic Carlisle with our dear friend, uh, Chris Delaporta at Woodshed Guitar Works. Uh, Here are Matt from Creators Guitar Shop. Correct. Got it right. That's right. I'd love to talk to you, but he just put... <laughs> He just put it in my hand. A 1973. We're on today's episode of PJ and the Beard. We're on a field trip here at BCR Music and Sound with uh, Greg Plesser, <laughs> that guy. I'm PJ on behalf of the Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, right, so never have call too much care. Three people <laughs> the That's what I want That's you to think about this That's song. Right. That's right. We're live from the Philadelphia Guitar Show, where I ran into my good friend Shane Regal, who I've known for at least a couple decades. He's here with uh, Al Sip Guitars. sitting here with Ray. Uh, this is Ray's world. <laughs> so, um, every time I'm in Ray's basement, this guitar catches my eye. Uh, and we'll start by putting it up here. Some people might have an idea. What do you think? thing to a legit burst you're gonna get is something like like this the weight the look the the bangs the bruises and and the pickups they've just they really nailed you know a, a, an authentic kind of underpowered PAF which makes them so great <laughs> Yeah. All right, so here we are at Skytop Guitars with Herrick. Hey, yeah, how are you? Good. We're here at the Artisan Guitar Show. It's one of our first stops. Stopped and played these guitars. They're fantastic. So we asked Eric if he'd be willing to like tell maybe the story about how he started and about the unique features of his guitar. You say you love me, baby. Please call me on the phone sometime. Say you love me, baby. Please call me on the phone sometime. So, um, coming out of that video, which is a little montage, which all the editing is is done uh, by the beard. Part of what putting out all this content and doing all these videos, <laughs> we wanted to start a conversation, and it's like, be careful what you ask for. Right. So we affectionately dubbed a, a, a series called, you know, we ask for this. So it, it could be the good, bad, and ugly. And right. I think most of it has been positive for sure. Like, and it's been, lots of good. Yeah, 
Um, and we were talking before before the show starts, right? So some of the good is it's developed friendships mm -hmm. that go outside of the YouTube channel. Right. Um, and I would give a shout out here to Brian Landreth, who mm -hmm. was one of the, one of the first people to comment on any video. Mm -hmm. um, not sure that he was the first, but early in the show he commented, and from that point on kept that conversation going with us. Right. Talked to me offline uh, on many occasions through you know Messenger or whatever, but has just been super supportive. Has um, kind of uh, maybe shopped us around a little bit, yeah. got us in touch, told us people to meet, told us where to go, gave us suggestions on things on the show, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't thank him enough because it's you know that's very inspiring to have somebody that's willing to, to support you like that. Um, and then guitar hack. Yeah. You know, and his show invited us on the show, big boom and subscri subscriber count mm -hmm. that day, you yeah. know, to get on his show and talk to him about what we were doing. Um, guys like Ben Combs, yeah. who in the early on was, was very supportive, would give shout outs to our channel and stuff like that when we would pop into his chat. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's intentionally not mentioning this list of guys that we know mm -hmm. comments on videos, mm -hmm. joins us for premieres. Yeah comes on live streams um, because we're afraid if we start to mention you, we will miss some of you. Um, but you know who you are, and we know who you are, and so we see you. And so um, <laughs> we, so we do. We really appreciate that. Um, but the comments aren't maybe always good. Yeah, some of them tell us what to do. <laughs> some people are not going to like this episode. No, because, well, we, we have a little thing we're going to say, but one of the biggest comments is, yak, 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 yak. Too, Too much, much talk, talk, boys. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk, talk. Get to the review. Just play the pedal. <laughs> you know, and I'm not, we're not going to apologize. I don't want to sound whatever, but yeah. we, started the, we started the show so we could hang out. It was like, the, the whole premise is, what if we get a chance to hang out, talk here, and yeah. invite everybody else into that? And so, mm -hmm. if you were hanging out in the basement, I don't think we would just get to the pedal boys. I think you know, yeah, there'd be no, some talking. No, right. And, no, right. They, right they, so. they join in the conversation. But our, our favorite, one of the more consistent comments <laughs> is Are, are you, you high? high? <laughs> <laughs> we're still trying to feed through what does that mean, right? Is it because we look half in the bag because it's Monday nights when we do this and maybe we're dragging for the weekend? Is it, you know, our views on things, our opinions on pedals? It's the play. It's, it's, it's something. something. We're trying to choose something positive, but there is one yeah. other that's probably um, rivals that, which we are going to mention one person. <laughs> oh, yes. Our buddy Joe Harvey and his comment is he always... He might win for more metal. Yeah, more metal. That's always right. Say, he might. And, and the funny, right before we started this, he commented that on the day's video. <laughs> From so. the least metal guys on the planet, we've got a guy like right. that that is very loyal. So with that, you know, we did our, our little like kind of unison. Are you boys high? Which leads us into a segment of we try to do this raw and real and unscripted, but every once in a while we get a little we get a little too full <laughs> of ourselves, and we script some moments that maybe looked a little bit better on the napkin I sketched up than they actually turned out. But I think he put together a few of them here. They are. So let me just put this down and we'll just get, I guess I gotta hold this. So why don't you talk about what, <laughs> today's episode of PJ and the Beard, I have some pink scissors. So you know what that means? It's time for a romper room? Romper, bumper, stomper, boo? Probably not. It means- Jason, where'd you go, man? Your old beard. I thought I heard you playing. Oh man, I can't wait. This last love pedal sale. Picked up uh, that. Oh man, I can't wait for us to try out this super sick tone. I love that demo that Sebastian did. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Why don't I just go ahead and set it? Hey, wait a minute! What? What's that? You don't have to put on the red line! Roxanne! You don't have to put on the red line! Huh? What? Oh, oh, we're on. Okay, sorry. Ooh. Sorry, I was just trying to get prepared for today's episode of DJ and the Beard. In today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we have an episode that we like to call Look What We Found. And the we is he. Yes. <laughs> Cut. All right. So bad acting aside, bad comments aside, um, and, but look for a new episode if we ask for this. That yeah. should be coming relative, relatively more soon. More subscribers equals more comments. Right. 
Um, Let's talk about those moments. Like the surprise, I think some of the surprise moments, mm-hmm. the surprise pedal, surprise gear, the things that yeah. just kind of jump out as, at us through the year. Yeah. Um, so I think we ought to start maybe just by looking at guitars. Yeah, so I think the first one is the aforementioned uh, Tajima. It, it, and I'm going to say two things about this and not keep it long. Surprising that this is involved in the biggest video. Again, mm-hmm. is it SD or the guitar? That's, that's your right. coin toss. But it's also... Not a surprise just in how many views, but how great this guitar is Absolutely. for the price point of two forty, two fifty. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've played, I haven't played it live, but the beard has played it in a live situation several times, and it's a really great guitar. So a surprise on a couple, couple items. Right, it's a keeper. Yeah, right. like we're not. Right. I mean, obviously we we don't need to keep it, mm-hmm. but it it sounds great. And it plays great. And kind of just jumping back real quick, and a, and a shout out to our Brazilian brethren who are right, right, right. very, very excited about this guitar and very proud that this guitar, the upper line, is is made in Brazil. A lot of Brazilian subscribers, a lot of Brazilian right. comments. So the Tajima, one of the surprises on our many... Our second most watched country is Brazil. Right, right. <laughs> We're international stars. After that, I would say this one. Brown spicy mustard. (laughs) Yeah, the Heinz, yep. (laughs) Spicy mustard, Harley Benton, junior double cut. And we got this guitar to kind of go up against the Firefly Junior right. double cut with the two P90s right. in it, which we don't still have, right. but a good friend of ours it's has. It's in the family still. So it's still in the family. Uh, but again, both of those kind of surprising for the price point. Mm-hmm. For the price point. Um, so. And then another one um, that, the, that the beard had prior to the show starting uh, was this episode Epiphone 339 which we did a um, you should try this uh, episode on um, so quite a few views on this and kind of a surprising guitar for the price when he did do some modification upgrades you know he might put uh, not maybe a card new but, tones yeah new volume knobs um, so this was another inexpensive guitar um, that was really a surprise this year um, on the show and outside the show yeah last guitar yeah we did an episode on it not sure the episode. That was another you should try this. It's it was another very, you should try this. It was a very early episode. Yeah. Um, and I don't think at that point we realized how great the guitar was. Right. So uh, it's been around. If you've been watching it all, you, you've seen it. It shows up on tons of episodes, especially the Leslie Sound mm-hmm. series. gold foil pickups in it the five way selector switch uh, I, I, I mean I can't say enough in fact here's what I'll say in that episode you said I bought it for like 400 bucks right and you said that you thought that the 400 bucks was a great price for the guitar but you didn't know if, you, if the thousand was fair yeah uh, at this point I think it is right uh, uh, the, my memory of that guitar other than how great it plays is you're like it's my favorite Strat and I'm like well we've lost all our Fender yeah, fans right. <laughs> But as I've played it, it really is great. I'm not sure it's my favorite. But it, it really does well, do the strat. you rekindled your love with the strats for the show. It does, yeah. it does the strat thing really yeah. well. The gold foil pickups. Mm-hmm. Not kidding. Great, great guitar. Check it out. It's not going to be on the Reverb Store, but check it out. Yeah. So kind of moving on to um, from guitars to pedals, like surprise moments, big moments. Um, again, we mentioned Josh Scott earlier. Uh, but he did a whole series on Behringer pedals, which we saw them for the first time. And I am the proud owner of an um, 80-ish uh, original Tube Screamer TS-808. And in the episode that Josh Scott did, he compared it to 
the vintage uh, tube overdrive T0800, and we did a dare to compare. And I said many times that I was fortunate enough to get this for 50 bucks, which I'm glad because for $25, this pedal, you know, not quite the mojo and the mystique, and you had to get past the brain of like, this should be that much greater. This is a really good pedal for mm -hmm. 25 ish dollars, literally all day, every day on Amazon when it's not sold out. So for me, this was probably of all of the pedals we did, which we did a ton. Uh, this pedal for me at, at a $25 price point was great. Yeah. So for me, the one that really kind of shocks me, and I can't hold it up because it's on my pedal board at the church right now, mm -hmm. uh, is the Third Dimension Chorus from TC Electronics. So we bought six pedals on that Black Friday sale. They were three for 99 That were three for 99 I'm not sure that we plan on keeping many, if any, of them. I've sold several. <laughs> yeah. The Third Dimension pedals i keep her yep. um i've rotated a whole bunch of things it keeps going back to the board not that it's better I, in some of the pedals that have been there are better right but it is so simple a couple buttons the first and the fourth button pushed um maybe we'll drop a little clip of that or whatever but mm -hmm. um sounds great i can't say enough about that <laughs> So, well, other surprise pedals that that aren't here, right? That we had fun with mm -hmm. on the episodes. Yes. Um, a couple for for me, uh, we did a you should try this again. Uh, that was part of the show. Starting, let's try each other's gear. And he had the uh, the Wowie Wah, the, which is the Warren Haynes signature series, a touchless wah. From switchless. Yeah. yeah. That is a touchless. Yeah. yeah. You don't even have to touch it. You just a look switchless at it wah. It yeah. Woo. <laughs> That is nuts. Okay, so um, Uh, so we actually did our first stand-up show, and I like to joke it wasn't my first stand-up show. We actually stood up and did an episode so we could play the Wowie Wow. That was a lot of fun. And then we created this other segment uh, from the Woodshed, uh, from Chris Delaporte's Woodshed Guitar Works, and we had two pedals. And I think the first one we did was... The Blue did. Box. Yeah, the MXR Blue Box. Makes you happy. Just buy this one right here. <laughs> oh sense. my gosh! It's well, I can't even say it. It's like the little blue pill in a box. But um, right, I, I still I went back and watched that, and I was still laughing. Hilarious! Like that pedal was was great. We bought it just because we couldn't. Right, it's it's a thing. Yeah, back there. yeah. We, we it, it was to, like we can't give yeah. it back. Right, it was just too funny. No, nope. That's going in the show shadow box, probably. <laughs> there was one that we did get that we could give back. It was right. the the diesel uh, VH4, I think is what it was called. <laughs> mom and tell her that I love her because <laughs> that person who built this pedal was not raised right <laughs> but that is unbelievably fun as fun as you had with the blue box that was fun I'm thinking maybe we ought to put the blue box in front of that right that now. was like I got to have like some alter ego right there like instead of the short flat top thing I had like a beard and black nails and made Dave Navarro look like a boy scout <laughs> Uh, 
the loudest pedal. And I say loud, and you're like, well, just turn the knob down. No, no, at one, yeah. they would chase you out of the room. But it was so much fun. The, the, again, another moment of like alter ego, a pedal we might not use. Unbelievable. If you were a metal player, Joe Harvey, uh, maybe you should check it out. Carrying on with the theme of things that surprised us. Right. Uh, when New X sent us the Rocktree pedal, they also sent us this. So they were like, yeah, we're going to send you this Leslie pedal and we're going to throw a little something else in. And they threw in this mini studio. And so because of that, we were like, well, we have we have to do this pedal, right? We have to do this pedal. So a surprise for us would be using a pedal that's like an impulse response loader. Mm-hmm. Um, totally new territory for us. But if the point of the show is to have fun... Uh, that was a fun episode to put together, mm-hmm. to, to record some tracks and layer it and just, you know, something we don't typically do. And along the same line, yeah. my wife, during one of the weeks, had just had this, some serious jaw surgery. And so Pat and I got down here and we didn't want <laughs> to disturb her. Racket. Yeah. So sitting around here for months, one of Pat's purchases, who knows yeah. why. When I got this. Yeah. He had also picked up the tube amp modeler, so we did an episode with this where we ran through a pedal board into this and then straight into the thing. And I'm not going to mention it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be in the, uh, the next, you asked for this. The next, you asked for, yeah, this. for this video. So that, um, yeah. So going from there. So yeah, we're going to move on to kind of a weird segment, but we're weird. We're going to talk about pedals that were used on the show but never got their own episodes right so in the beginning i don't remember which came first we're like how do we play because we had not figured out how to have two live amps in the room how are we going to jam how are we going to try things out so the old trusty uh ditto lupa who uh tour is no longer with tcs with universal audio now but okay. but tour with uh, ditto lupa so this has made a lot of appearances on the show and then um you know the we thought a band in the can, right? Like, no budget, let's get a band. So I got this trio uh, band creator and thought, we'll do this. As I was going back and watching episodes, we made a reference to this pedal saying, well, in 12 months, we'll figure out how to use it. Um, it's 12 months later. We still don't know how to maximize this pedal. But this was our band in the can until we figured out how to run two amps. So these two pedals, kind of integral to the show in the beginning. Um, uh, so and then, We might find one of them on Reverb soon. Huh. Um, do you want me to play it with the uh, trio band first, and then how do you? Yeah, do it? yeah, we've we've been playing with this little. It's the only band we can afford right here. <laughs> this little the bass player and trio. a drummer, uh, which is interesting. Uh, that that could be maybe in a year from now when we figure out how that pedal <laughs> actually yeah. works, we'll do a little episode on that. But yeah, our band. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'll play this one. <laughs> Just saying, cool uh, pedal, the, but with the original box and power supply. <laughs> yeah, cool pedal, but hard for us. So, things that we've used a lot that have never had their own episode. Right. One that jumps out to me is the Barber Electronics Direct Drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of the very first Barber Electronics Direct Drives yeah. when they still had the light underneath where your foot is. And so that changed a little bit, and they're totally different now. Great pedal. Um, I've used it on my board for years. I have, it on, I have another one. On my board. And so I have two of these that have been floating around. Inspired me to buy one. <laughs> Pat found one of Because I just can't borrow one of his. I gotta go buy my own. <laughs> right. So can't say enough good things. If you've never checked out Barber Electronics and what they're doing, mm-hmm. check them out. We should probably do an episode because we right. use them so much. Right. Um, and they're local. Maybe we can actually get out and visit them perhaps. Right. And what surprises me, I guess, about that pedal is all of the overdrives that we've tried out. Dumble style. You, you Tube just, screamers. Right. Tons of overdrives. I keep going back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, another pedal there that we do use a lot on the show that never, doesn't have its own episode is the Analog King of Tone. And in keeping with tradition, there's two of these. Yes. Here too. <laughs> two different colors. Uh, right. Maybe one of the, this is a high gain on one side or something different. Both the same. Just oh, two different colors. Nice, um, nice. High gain, low gain. <laughs> um, but I think that's a testament Right. To the Barber Electronics Direct right. Drive because both of these right. equal two year waiting lists. Yeah. Usually. It takes forever to get them. You want to do well, that no, one? this way. Either way. Yeah, do that because one. I am a, a delay freak and I always have to have delay. Delay is my crutch. Um, this uh, Hermita Audio uh, EPH3 has been on a ton of episodes 
put it in the effects loop on the amps that are sitting off camera. Remember to get to those in a second. But this on the show a ton of times. Uh, great tape, uh, tape echo, tape delay from our media auto, aka distributed and done by Love Pedal. And because there's this there's two of those down here, too. Yeah, there are. You had one from before. There's a white one and a black one. And then this is a great pedal he's going to talk about now because I use this word, and I mean this nicely. My crutch, my thing is delay. You love reverb. You have mm -hmm. your amp. And so this pedal is a magic little device over here. Right. And I don't know. It's been on many shows. It might have been featured on the reverb it, show, it but it's never. on the board. Right. And it might have been featured on the reverb show that we did. Yep. Episode. But it doesn't, it's never had like a, like a featured thing. We used it with this as well. We use it with that as well. It's been used a lot. Mm -hmm. And so this is the Dispatch Master from Earthquaker Devices. Seems like this might be one of their most normal pedals <laughs> right. that they have. Right. I, I can't talk highly enough about this. You have just a nice analog sounding delay. Mm -hmm. Sounding, I'm not sure that it is analog. I don't even know. Doesn't matter. Sounds great. And then you also have a reverb knob on it too. So... If you go to jams, go to rehearsals, if you use backline amps and you like to have delay and reverb, That's your guy. throw this at the end of your chain. If the amp doesn't have reverb, you just turn that reverb knob up a little bit with whatever your delay setting is. Always on kind of pedal. If you just like that little bit of reverb and, or delay in the background, can't say enough. So maybe a quick segue. I keep pointing over there because off camera, the amps used most often. Uh, I, my friend Brody, who had a bunch of episodes with him, he turned me on to the PV Classic. And so there is a PV Classic uh, 30 combo over there that is the beards that i use here uh and that's the one i use and then he has his go-to over there as well which is a fender hot rod deluxe so, so two two accessible yes like this these are amps set four to six hundred dollar right right, right. Three, buy them used yep. yep three to six so we um, have not done that but and and maybe that's the next segue into hey beard why don't you tell them what's next what's coming up next year so Again, I told you What's next? So speaking of amplifiers, sitting off mm. over there is also a Leslie 16. Uh, so recently we picked up a Leslie 16. So one of the comments has been, you're doing all these Leslie pedals. What about a real Leslie? And so we have a real Leslie. And we're just waiting. There's a field trip planned around that Leslie to maybe get it just gone over a little bit mm -hmm. to meet somebody new, a guy that's pretty renowned in this area for yep. doing amp work. Yep. Um, that's coming up. So field trips, more field trips. One of the favorite things that we've done this year is the field trips. One of the hardest things to schedule and make happen. <laughs> right. But one of our, I think one of our favorite things to do. Um, learning more on how to do that and get the sound quality good yeah. and stuff like that too. Yeah. Part of the, the microphone there. I won't touch it again. Not really. Um, probably at the end. Definitely more pedals. Yeah, let's just real quick. Pedals, there's so many because again, in a self-funded channel and our own personal collection and... The accessibility and price point of pedals is a little bit why we lean towards pedals, and we lean towards inexpensive guitars. But we're looking to change that a little bit, right? Yeah. Coming coming this next year, maybe some more higher end guitars. Maybe not all of our PRSs, but maybe other things, um, and maybe some acoustic guitars. Try to delve more in and and, and broaden what we do. Um, well, and part of that comes from forming connections, right? Yeah, right. So we we've been forming some connections with these companies. Right. Hopefully, that will bring some more of that stuff in. Mm -hmm. um, just even playing on the team that we play on. Yeah. One of the members works for Beard Guitars, so yeah. talking to him, hopefully maybe doing something with them at some point. Um, we we're going to try to get him fired while they were at NAMM and grab one of the special guitars out of the Right, he, right. He, he said no, he's a good soldier. <laughs> he's a good soldier. But hopefully working something out where we can help yeah. them out a little bit and learn yeah. more about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, more interviews. Like you said, field trip, more, more interviews. interviews. So we're hopefully getting season one wrapped up in the next month or two. And then that's been basically pedal manufacturers. So mm -hmm. what's next? We're not going to share that. Um, we don't know. We think we know, but we don't <laughs> yeah. really know. I, I mean, I think mm -hmm. I think this year in review for us kind of sums up that fact. We don't know. I like to joke that we're building the plane while we're flying it. Right. We and can't. we're still trying to stay true to what it is that we want to do. We have done some things that involve some strategy. But still, not didn't do anything we didn't want to do. Right. But maybe lean towards a certain things because oh, we got traction. Let's let's look at another one. That's the second Tajima, right? So there are things that we do that are strategic, but we're still staying true to who we are and still talking about gear, right? And hanging out, right? And it's been what a chance, opportunity just to try out a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. meet new people, talk to new people, both in the industry, both fans of the industry. Um, you know, just it's been it's been. 
kind of crazy. It has to look back and see what's happened, uh, you know, uh, and and uh, we we are going to go to a couple guitar shows. We we're tentatively scheduled to go to NAM uh, this summer in Nashville, which will be a whole another level of craziness for us. Of course, us. after watching all the NAM coverage for the yeah. last, I'm not sure I want to be part of yeah. the people that. <laughs> they basically said, "I'm going to send you in as a scout. You set it up, and then I'm going to come in with the gear, and then I'm getting out." Because right. I mean, it is a cacophony of craziness. Uh, but that's where the this Lewitt and some other mics will probably come in handy. Always trying to up our game uh, and, and trying to make things better. So with that, if you hung around this long, oh man, yeah, go to Facebook, send us an instant message. We'll send you a sticker. <laughs> yeah, maybe even a magnet, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a pick or something. Um, <clears throat> but no, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I assume if you've been here this long, maybe you're a subscriber. If you're not, please subscribe. Uh, we mentioned that in the beginning on how we, much we appreciate that. Mm-hmm. New content Wednesdays, Saturdays. And I think, believe it or not, no, there's two more things. Never mind. There's one more thing. Well, two more. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. He's the editor, so this may not stay in there. But I want to take this moment to thank Jason. Oh, no. There's other people, but I'm thanking you first. I'm still getting this pecking oh. order right because we're gonna crescendo with thanking the right people. But I want to thank you because your house, you've invested the time in the gear and figuring out how it all works. You've been the guy to figure out how we're we gonna do these things. You're the guy editing everything. This would not happen. It was your idea which I'm along for this journey, and I don't regret it for a second. The Leslie series was your idea. So I just want to say thank you to all of everyone listening. This would not happen without him, and it has been a great joy for me and a great excuse to buy gear. But Sounds like you should give me a raise. Well, and he might edit this out because he's a very <laughs> modest. So, yeah. I'm hoping after that he's going to edit this out because he's a very modest and humble guy, but I appreciate everything that, that he does. And But I think there's other people. There's two other specific yes. people that we should thank that – we, we blame the genesis of this show on them, but it's really not totally true. But well, Not 100%. So. They've never gotten... If you have two women in your life... If you have two women in your life... <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. If you have a woman in your life yeah, that is willing right. to listen to what you're interested in and what yeah. you're passionate about and share that interest and passion, mm-hmm. even if they really deep down inside could care less, <laughs> you have to be one of the luckiest guys on the world and I in the world. And I think that we both fall into that category. So. Yeah. So our wives are totally supportive of what we do. Even we joke about it. They, they are. They're really supportive of what we do. Especially, you know, Mrs. Beard, who has to have her house rattle every Monday night. And right. So I, I don't want to belabor it, but we definitely wanted to make sure that we thank them. And we may find some cute little pictures to put up of them uh, with us so they, they don't get all upset. But... So I, I think it was appropriate for us to, to thank them um, yeah. for that because we couldn't do it without them um, in the many ways, not just this channel. So you already done the subscribe. You already done the thing. You were going to toss it to me. And uh, so with that, our tagline that is as true as ever and uh, reminding you, I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. <laughs>